This is a Whiskey Six, a Lima, Mike, a Juliet. My name's Terry, and this is a recording of a presentation I made at the West Mars Amateur Radio Club meeting on Monday night. I'd like to be able to share it with those that were unable to attend. I've been uh, working with antennas since 1962, and I set up a 20, uh, 220 foot long wire off the top of my parents' home uh, to a telephone pole in the backyard, started doing shortwave listening. Uh, since then, I've had uh, CB ground planes, uh, Yagi uh, vertical and horizontal uh, four element uh, I, uh, beams and comma wire antennas in Vietnam for doing Army Mars on 20 megahertz and a rotatable dipole in Vietnam for Army Mars and then an inverted V back at Lawton Port Sill. I worked all 50 states on CW and then a 10 meter uh, dipole just to listen to Oscar 7 strung between the trees at my quarters at Fort Sill and then a Gotham quad up on top of the chimney on top of the uh, Oh, I guess 45 feet to the top of that thing uh, on Lauman uh, at Fort Sill and uh, just had a ball. Since then, uh, lots and lots and lots of other antennas. But today I'm going to show you going to use uh, large wire antennas to uh, be king of the hill on HF. And um, I've had a lot of experience with wire antennas um, and a lot of experience with various antennas. I was in the Army for 20 years and set up... Uh, typically with a random wire or something like a uh, inverted V or a vertical off of a chain link fence, but ultimately ended up with a, a beam on a tower. And uh, so that's what I've got now. You can see my antenna farm over to the right on this screen. But I started out with a Zulu Sierra 6 Bravo Kilo Whiskey wire antenna and started uh, making improvements to that station, uh, operating with just a uh, simple radio and antenna switches and uh, the G5RB uh, Zulu Sierra 6 Bravo Kilo Whiskey antenna uh, hung from the highest point on a uh, pine tree just outside of my shop. And then I went to Hamcation and found a hex beam. They had five different vendors there. I looked at every one of them, considered the simplicity of their construction, how easy it would be to build one, how durable it would be, and ultimately I settled on a November Alpha 4 Romeo Romeo a hex beam. It's built in Pensacola and uh, in my opinion it's one of the best hex beams you can get and that's the one I have set up here. I bought it, brought it home and within uh, 30 minutes of uh, starting the process of setting it up it was in this configuration and then I added a, uh, a feed line to it and ran it through the wall and got it hooked up to the radio and the antenna switches and uh, it worked as well as my uh, wire antennas when I was pointed at the station. Not better, not worse, but as well as. Then I put it on a 10-foot mast, clamped it to the side of a, uh, a low wall, and it was better than the uh, wire antenna just 10 feet off of the ground. Later, I put it up at 25 feet with a rotor underneath it, and uh, it was just hands down better than the uh, wire antennas in all cases. I have a, uh, <clears throat> friends that I talk with, and uh, they gave me constant reports of improving the signal. My grandsons came over, my wife encouraged me to put up a tower. We dug the hole, we uh, set the base. It's a tilt over affair. My grandsons helped me uh, put the pole in and the, uh, the rotor control in. And then one afternoon when they were all gone and I was here by myself, I went out there and uh, laid the tower back over and hooked up the uh, uh, 10 foot mast to the top of the 15 foot mast and put the hex beam all the way up at about uh, almost 90 feet to the top of the tower and uh, started having fun. One of the first things I did is I did a, a front to back test to see how well it worked and I'm going to play a video for you. Watch the S meter and you can see that uh, while the manufacturer claims a 20 dB front to back with one S unit equaling about 6 dB, uh, I'm seeing a 4 to 5 S unit difference as I rotate the uh, antennas. So you can watch the rotator in the uh, uh, up above and watch the S meter below and you'll see what I'm talking about. I will on and okay, here's front to back and here's on the hex beam at above 80 feet. Above 80 feet. Turning towards him. 
turned away from it. Okay, here's the hex beam versus a wire antenna, a uh, comparison. I'm talking over the top of the Maritime Mobile Net, so you'll have to pay attention to the S meter reading again as I switch between the hex beam and the wire antenna while working the uh, or listening to the Maritime Mobile Net on 14300. Yeah, pretty impressive. So flipping back and forth between the two, it uh, it became obvious. Then later, I put a, a three-element Yagi trapped uh, three-element Yagi, a TH3 Mark IV underneath the hex beam, so it's sitting at about 72 feet. The hex beam's now up about 80 feet. I've shortened the uh, mast and put a, uh, a hex plate underneath it so I can tilt the, uh, he tilt the uh, hex, uh, hex, plate, hex beam up when I lay the tower down. I've also got a tilt plate on the, uh, the Yagi so that when I lay the tower down, the Yagi stays horizontal to the ground and I can tilt the uh, hex beam up so that uh, its base is above the uh, above the side of the tower and then that way I can lay the whole thing down and work on it standing flat footed uh, on the ground uh, but uh, my experience is that uh, uh, at a height of about 45 feet versus 90 feet uh, you can see a real difference in the hex beam late at night after I first got the beam up I was talking to a group Pitcan Island Seattle, Washington, and Kansas City, and the guy on Pitcan Island realized I had the uh, uh, electric tower, and he said, can you bring your uh, hex beam down as low as you can? I know I can get it down to about 45 feet uh, on top of the tower. And he said, let's see what it sounds like at 45 feet, and then put it back up at 90 feet. Let's see what it sounds like there. So we did that. It takes three minutes to crank it down, three minutes to crank it back up, but really, it's easy to do. At Pitcan Island, uh, when it was at 45 feet, was S6, but at 90 feet, it was Pitcan Island was S9. It was the louder signal. Seattle went from S8 at 45 feet down to S6 at 90 feet. So they were too close, and they were not getting the low angle of radiation advantage that uh, Pitcan Island was getting. And then Kansas City, which was closer still. When it was at 45 feet, they were S9. When I ran it all the way back up to uh, uh, 90 feet, uh, they were down to S6. So again, uh, as you raise the antenna, the stations closer to you uh, lose signal strength, but the stations farther from you can uh, gain signal strength. <coughs> now, these are the uh, uh, reported characteristics of the, uh, the hex beam. It actually outperforms these characteristics gain of 5.5 dB, and I'm seeing much better than that. Front to back of 20 dB, I'm seeing better than that. They claim a 2 to 1 SWR across the entire band. I got a 1 to 1 match across the entire band. It was unbelievable just how nice a match I got on every band. Turning radius 10.8, diameter of the beam 21.6, uh, and then they say the height of the beam from the base plate to the top of the beam, that's from the about from the 6 meter element to the 20 meter element at the uh, top of that upside down umbrella about 39 inches. They say the whole affair weighs about 25 pounds. I saw somewhere else they said 23 and I saw somewhere else still again somebody claimed 19. So, But it's 25 pounds or less. And then the wind load is less than 5 square feet and I believe that. And of course it covers, uh, it covers the uh, 
it covers the, uh, uh, the, the, it'll take the full legal limit. Now here's a final comparison, and this is the uh, hex beam versus a Yagi, which is the C3 full-size Yagi, and I included an off-center-fed dipole, and we changed the power level from uh, 1,300 watts down to 100 watts, and you can listen and hear how, it, how well it performs uh, at those various settings compared to the, uh, uh, the full-size uh, Yagi, no traps, full-size elements on uh, 20 meters with this uh, uh, hex uh, with this uh, Force 12 uh, C3. So here we go. Yeah, and I should probably point out that the difference in height of the antenna is giving an advantage to the close in. I think this guy's in Kansas City that's doing the recording. He's hearing me better on the lower antenna than he would that same antenna raised up another 20 feet. So there's an advantage to the hex beam for being lower and talking to somebody in the States as compared to the, uh, uh, the hex beam, which is up on top of a stack of stuff and therefore doesn't have the advantage of the lower height when talking to Kansas City. I'm not going to talk a great deal about this slide. I just wanted to show you that my complete switching system is two switches, a uh, four-position um, uh, Ameritron uh, switch that allows me to switch between the uh, six-meter uh, uh, antenna and the uh, 10 through 40-meter uh, well, the 10 through 20 meter uh, C4 at this point, I've changed antennas by the time I updated this slide, and then a double bazooka for 40 and 80, and then a standalone uh, two elements on the Force 12, and that's all on that one antenna switch. And then the antenna switch that feeds that antenna switch is uh, uh, this MFJ4726. It's also a remote antenna switch, but I can switch uh, six different radios or six different antennas. And uh, the way I have it set up is position two is the tower or the switch up above. So I put it on position two and then I can use the other switch to switch the uh, antennas or I can turn that switch off and I can control uh, the other five antennas, the hex beam, the 43 foot vertical, the G5RB, and then I have a, a position open on that switch for testing mobile antennas, which I'll demonstrate here in just a minute. And then this is the uh, comparing antennas, uh, and uh, I thought I would uh, show this slide because you can read the frequency at which I have the lowest SWR. And so on the hex beam, lowest SWR, it was one-to-one -one really across each of these bands, but 14.18, and then 18.13, and then 21.22, and then 24.89, and then 28.4, and then 50.43 were the uh, lowest SWR for each band. And then if you go down to the uh, uh, G5RV, you can see that uh, uh, it also had a good uh, match at the bottom of 80 meters, at the bottom of 40, at the bottom of 10, at the high end of 20 meters, uh, at the low end of uh, uh, 18 uh, uh, megahertz, and then uh, 21 megahertz at the high end, and then 24.89 and then 28.4 and then 50.41 so actually worked uh, quite well and okay so that's the end of the presentation if you have questions hopefully I'll get this posted to YouTube and you can uh, write questions uh, in the YouTube area uh, for comments and I'll get those and then I'll respond to you uh, via YouTube so the questions and the answers can be shared with everybody hope you've enjoyed the presentation it's been my pleasure to share it with you.